Chiefs podcast in the kingdom. Chiefs kingdom. Welcome back to another live podcast for that ass. We're all chiefed up. I'm Mike. This is Steve. Steve, how you doing today? I'm tired. I'm real tired, tired today. You're going to go to work too. Feeling like you an old a, man. You only got a few minutes with us today. So let's jump on in because I'm kind of I'm kind I'm a little horned up today uh with the news about a top 30 visit with our boy right up the road, Christian Boyd. Are you a little excited about this one from Northern Iowa? We've been talking about Christian Boyd today for a few probably a few weeks, talking about maybe needing some defensive tackles, some, de- some defensive line, uh additions, some rotational players. Pretty excited about it, man. Uh, I found I, d- I dug this one up. This is when he came out of high school. He was the number 19th ranked player in Missouri. Look at his 40 time down there at the bottom. <laughs> 4 4 40 at 6 4 3 0 5. That had to be a typo, right? It's got to be. Do you think they got him <laughs> mixed up? Do you remember there was a uh, prospect? I think his name was Chris Boyd. Chris that Boyd. That was a uh, cornerback. I bet you that's what they've got. Chris I don't Cross. know if they did, though. There's I no mean, way. Let me look this up. You, you might have to. Uh, I'm, I'll I'm check it out here. Up. He's a nose tackle slash defensive tackle, by the way. He didn't run a four. There's no way. They say his 40 time. Here's a 5.1. There we go. That's, That's more closer. Like it. Okay. He was invited to the Shrine Bow. By the way, Steve, the Chiefs talked to him at the Shrine Bow. The Chiefs had already been in contact with him, and they get a top 30 visit in right now. But the thing is, I've learned today that if you get a top 30 visit, with a guy that's within 50 miles, if the university or he lives within 50 miles of your facilities, that doesn't technically count against you as a top 30. So there's that's not strange. many places that Kansas City lines up for with that. I think they're exactly 48 miles from like Lawrence, Kansas. So maybe you can get some Kansas Jayhawks in there. Uh, but Northern Iowa kid right here, he 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 grew up in Kansas City, Blue Springs High School is where he went to, to high school. So people from the area are kind of familiar with him. 6'4", 317, 9 and 4 eighth inch hands, 31 and 2 eighth inch arms. Uh, he's in the 13th percentile with arm length. So he doesn't have the longest arms I've ever seen. Uh, they said he runs a 5'1", 40, and he bench pressed. 38 times at 225 that has to be a typo too that's 99th percentile is this cat really benching 225 38 times <laughs> that might be legit i don't know but i know he didn't run a 4-4 that's wild I, I think it is weird that like i've watched a lot of christian boyd tape and i do like him uh like he's very dominant on tape but you have to remember the competition level he's playing right um so there's always that, but like, there's not a whole lot to find about Christian Boyd. If you just start going and uh, looking online, trying to find out about Christian Boyd, right. it's not talked about just a whole lot. Like, I don't even think he has a profile on NFL.com for the draft. No, I don't think he does um, either. There's he not a whole lot. He didn't get a combine lot. invite. He got snubbed. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. But yeah, 6'2", 320-ish, somewhere around that range. Um I would say, I think that 40 time that you had, the five point one or whatever yeah five one yeah that that would be the one that i would stick with there's no way fat <laughs> no no way fat boy ran a, f- a four four well, that was coming out of high school you think he was just a really good athlete <laughs> nope. coming out of high school hey if you're that big coming out of high school <laughs> running a four four you'd have been going to alabama as a running back yeah no way dude that would have um, been insane but no all i can really say about the guy is what i've seen personally and that right. was just a tape that i watched which mike i brought up christian boyd to you a while back yes um, sir I thought it looked like a, an intriguing prospect. Um, but like I said, from what I could tell on tape, like it looked like he had a pretty good pass rush attack um, as far as being on the inside. Uh, he could definitely bull rush straight through there. He was getting pressure on the quarterback on right. the pass plays. Uh, he, he knew how to uh, sit on a block and, and, and get a running back. Uh, coming through the hole like he was pretty patient on a lot of that scene. Then again, like I said, he's very dominant on tape. But right. but he plays at UNI, and the competition level 
isn't exactly top tier. So you always got to be a little skeptical about things like that. Right. So uh, I've wrote up some stuff about Christian Boyd. I've watched him on film a few times. We even had some people in the chat. I forget the name, but he said that he works with his dad or he knows him or he knows the family. Said that the Chiefs may be interested. They have shown the top 30 visit interest here. But look, he's getting top 30 visits everywhere. I think he's met with the Steelers already. He's met with the Arizona Cardinals. He's getting a little bit of uh, traction because he was at the he was at the East West Shrine Bowl. And again, the Chiefs did talk to him there. Um, from what I could see on film, his pros, and I'll just read off what I seen. I said his pros, his hands, uh, his hand use was excellent. He's got a strong upper body and he consistently can swat away the blockers. Uh, he has violent hands and decently long arms on film. Well, when it actually was shown, his arms are saying shorter than that. So we didn't get any official numbers here because of his, you know, not being invited to the combine. So we still don't know what that arm length and everything is. Uh, whatever. I also said, despite his relatively tall frame, he typically plays with a low pad level. So he can do that. Uh, he can push the pocket with a bull rush. And I mean, I think his best skill is that he's got a really big burst uh, off the snap. Like he's pretty quick off the ball, kind of like Javon Dexter last year, Steve. We both loved right. him. He ended up going the second round through Chicago. His biggest knock was that he couldn't get off the ball. The entire 23, 21 guys on the field were moving, plus the three officials, four right. or five, six officials, before Javon Dexter even realized the ball had snapped. That's how slow he looked. But this dude is the complete opposite. Um, he actually had 149 tackles. In his career there, 22 and a half tackles for loss, 10 and a half sacks, five pass breakups, and two forced fumbles. So he is productive. Uh, he is a big guy. I think this would be a perfect candidate, Steve, for somebody to come in and replace Derek Naughty long term. Right. Dude, so I did a little bit of digging. I found a WCFCourier.com talks about Christian Boyd and his pro day at Northern Iowa. Let's go. So, you got some pro day <clears throat> numbers going. Well, that's the thing. Let me get to it. I'll just read you what they have here. It says, a rising prospect in the pre-draft circuit, Boyd first earned the attention of NFL scouting community with a defensive practice player of the week honor at the East-West Shrine Bowl in January. NFL Network insider Tom Palacero described Boyd as a surprise omission from the NFL Combine and said that defensive linemen lined up visits with seven NFL teams following the Shrine Bowl, including the Detroit Lions and the New Orleans Saints. Boyd continued to, to, to turn heads with a monstrous performance in the bench press on Monday, which is what you were talking about. There it was. There it yep. was. The six foot two, 329 pound prospect managed a program pro day record of 38 reps of 225 pounds in the bench press. So that was right. The wow. performance would have ranked second overall at the NFL Combine behind Arkansas center Bo Lemmers, 39 reps, and first Bo amongst Lemmer. defensive linemen by five. A tweaked hamstring prevented Boyd from par participating in on-field workouts. Okay. But the impact of his eye-popping numbers in the bench press was evident. Um, one scout, NFC North scout, said that he was very, very disappointed that he did not get to see him work out. And uh, it was an intimate, uh, sentiment that was shared by the majority of scouts that were there. So he did not get to do a lot at the pro day because of, because a, of a hamstring tweak. Yep. Man, this kid, he look, from everything I've seen on film, he was just a big presence. He was a leader on their defense. He was a, like, just somebody that was always disrupting. Um, I actually got a little bit of video here I can play while I'm talking here. Um, you can see him at the senior bowl just running through people. I mean, just look at that push pull grab. He gets in the backfield, he disrupts. He's a team leader. He, he's very, he's somebody that they look to to teach them things. And he said he wants to carry on the legacy at Northern Iowa and teach that. So he is a, he's a fit, like he's a very compact looking little guy. You know what I mean? Like he's almost, he carries that 320 plus. He carries it very well. Like he looks like a more fit, you know, like Derek Naughty again. I'll, I'll, I'll do like the Derek Naughty comparison. Derek Naughty's more like, you know, he's just a big guy. You can tell he's got the big gut and everything. This kid carries it pretty well. Like he kind of looked a little like thin, like Aaron Donald esque right. out there. So I'm very I just happy with. I just noticed that on the clip, he went to high school at Blue Springs. Yeah, Blue Springs. So yeah, I mean, a hometown guy right there. Yeah, he's very local, and people know him, man, from the area. I, I like it. 
like this may be one of my favorite top 30s we've talked about so far. Because by the way, we've talked about Anthony Gold, Oregon State. We had a whole video about him, top a uh, top 30. Um, they brought in who else? They bring in on top 30, Steve. Off the top of my head, they brought in um, Anthony Gold. Did you say him? Just said him. Okay, just so said him. Good a- sorry, I wasn't paying attention. I was reading comments, but uh, Anthony Gold. They brought in Eric All. Hey, yep, Eric um, All from Iowa. Let's see, Javon Baker. Yep, um, Javon Baker, UCF wide receiver. Right, we had a video where we talked about like four of them. Yeah, I can't think of them off the top of my head, but they brought in a lot. But I think this defensive tackle, that's a that's a to me, I still think they're they're looking through for guys that they would get in the mid rounds. But by the way, I don't know how mid round this guy's going to get. I get that he's not on the radar or anything, but Northern Illinois has been known to put out some talent. I think this kid goes somewhere, probably early third round to early fifth. So I'm going to say like very early day three, round three, round four. Do you think, Steve, that if he could, if he could have worked out, by the way, you think he could have gotten the second round? This kid's generating a lot of buzz. Um, Northern Iowa, by the way. Uh, but yeah, he could. He really could. You said Northern Illinois. You said oh, Northern, Northern Iowa. Iowa. My bad. Yeah, Northern Iowa. Uh, yeah, dude, he's creating a lot of buzz, and I think it's like it. There's not a whole lot on him because he wasn't invited to combine. He didn't get to run at his pro day, so everyone's really just going off the tape. And that's what I talked about earlier. There's a lot of buzz going on about him, but I think like when you do things like bench press 225 pounds, 38 oh, yeah. reps, that, that kind of some eyes, baby. <laughs> That kind of shows people that that strength they're seeing on tape is legit. It's not just bad competition. Exactly. So if he would have been able to run and do a little bit of different things, I think it could have even helped him further. But right now, I think the eyes are open. I think people are looking at him. He's got some buzz going. He could move up the draft boards quite a bit. Right. You know who and else has got some buzz going? Gil with a five Gil bomb. Gil with the five bomb, baby. Bill, Gil's getting it going with a five bomb. Gil, we appreciate you. Gil is a, a legend. Uh, give a little catch up in the chat for Gil. Heck yeah, man. Uh, by the way, since we're talking about Gil and we're talking about the ACU crew, thanks for being here. We're a little Thank early you. today. Again, it, it you're going to see us pop in and out crazy. We're trying to line up our schedules the best we can here. It's a little early for a Wednesday live. I get it. But, you know, we're here and we're having a good time. We appreciate you being here. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. If you haven't, if you're new to the channel, we're two goons that like to talk about the Chiefs way too much. And we get a little horned up over the draft. So if you really like draft content, this is the place to be. Uh, go ahead and click that subscribe button. We're trying to get to like 30K. We haven't really set a, a new goal, Steve. We crushed 25K, and it's kind of slowed down here in the off season a little bit. Well, we, we need just, a new we, goal. We'll discuss it. We'll discuss it. We need to sit down and figure some it. things out. But uh, oh, for this now, is a private conversation. For now, we're just rolling right along. We're, we're just, just moving rolling. right along. Rolling, uh, rolling, rolling. Well, speaking of rolling right along, I have to get out of here soon. So let's go ahead and move over to Rasheen Ali, and then I'll let you take over let's and finish it. out this live stream. But, dude. Rasheen Ali from Marshall, running back. That's a name a lot of Chiefs Kingdom has been mentioning. Um, Even throughout just the fans doing little mock drafts and things themselves, I've seen Rasheen Ali pop up quite a bit, Mike. Yes. Uh, 5'11", 206, 31 and one quarter inch arms, eight and five eighths inch hands. Uh, At the, uh, the NFL Combine, he finished 27th in production score in running back, so a little low there. But he was 10th in athleticism score. And then his overall total score was 68. They have him ranked at the 20th running back. Um, Mike, what is it that you like about Rasheen Ali, and what do you not like? Okay. I'm going to save my comp on Rasheen Ali until I get finished talking here. But I think you guys are going to like my comp. Uh, he was invited to the Senior Bowl. He had a really good three productive years. He grew up in Cleveland. He went to Shaker Heights High School. If you don't know anything about Shaker Heights, you do now. Travis Kelsey and everybody, that's the, their area, man. He was a three-star ready recruit. He went to Marshall. I think he got an offer from Howard, if I'm not mistaken. He chose Marshall, and you're like, that's it? That's all he could get? How come he's only getting colleges at uh, old men's names? Right. Uh, you can either go to Marshall or Howard. What about uh, – was Leroy was Leroy not available? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, this is what first. Just look at his stats, though. In 2021, he had 250 carries for 1,400 yards, 23 touchdowns. That was a freshman. As of 2022, his his season was cut 
short due to injury. And we'll talk about that injury in a minute because there's a little bit of a mystique around this injury in 2022. In 2023, 210 carries for about 1,127 yards, 15 touchdowns. He had another 27 catches for 207 yards. If you look at his pros, he's got ideal one-cut ability, which means he can one-cut, get through the hole, get up the field, and, and chunk it off. He's very instinctive, and he can read and react to block development. Um, he doesn't have any problems with the patience issue or being decisive when he finds gaps and lanes. Like, he really don't. Some of the, the things I didn't like about him was that he doesn't have a lot of elusiveness. Once he catches the ball... Uh, it just, he doesn't have a lot of moves and to back that up, by the way, PFF, give him a 36.6 elusiveness rating. If you compare that, by the way, he's our number 14th running back right now. And people would say, why is he 14? That's low. If you look at some of the guys in the top five, just for example, if we go up to like, um, let's see, Trey Benson, number three, his elusiveness rating, uh, was a one Oh six. Jalen Wright's elusiveness rating was a 132, and then Rasheen Ali's down here at a 36 <laughs> elusiveness rating. So if that doesn't tell you that he's not super elusive, <laughs> so Jalen Wright, tell you. Jalen Wright is four times as elusive as Rasheen Ali. Right. He's four times shadowy. <laughs> he's moving around like That's a ninja insane. out here. Well, Steve, Mike, just I want to add in a, a, something real quick that I liked about Rasheen Ali in the tape that I watched, and I think it does translate to the Chiefs' offense somewhat. Um, they did line him up wide, uh, a lot, right? So he can move. they they can put him out there, you know, in their empty sets, they can put him out wide and, uh, he can catch the ball. So that is one plus that I did like about Rashid Ali. Yeah. His tape was fun, man. It was yeah. a fun watch for real. Like he runs the ball. Well, there was a catch. He made against Georgia state off the top of my head over on the sideline where it just looked like he was about to get hit by three people. The ball was thrown up between him and another receiver, and somehow he just comes down with it, does a little spin move, takes it to the house, and everybody else would just be, like knocked each other out on the play. It was pretty crazy. Um, the thing is, is I think he's got a little bit of an injury history. Like it may not be nothing crazy, but there's something there. In 2022, he he had his season cut short. Now I went and tried to dig this up, and you could not find a lot on this injury. I'll just read you what I um, found online. It said, Marshall running back Rasheen Ali, one of the nation's top freshman rushers last season, is taking a leave of absence for undisclosed reasons, said Marshall head coach Charles Huff. He said, Ali's exit comes less than two weeks before Marshall opened the season on September 3rd. Uh, Rasheen will be away from the team for some time, and as soon as he is mentally, physically, and emotionally ready to return, he will be back, says Huff. Our team and our staff are doing a great job of supporting him, and we're looking forward to getting him back. Out of privacy and respect for Rasheen and his family, we will not comment further on this topic until he is back with us. So it sounds like something happened in which there may have been a little injury, may have been some off-field issue, may have been a family problem. They kind of let him take a little bit of time away from the team and fix it. Um, but it did say, and it goes on to say, on September 13th, Ali did return to the team after his week-long absences over mental, physical, and emotional health issues. Again, you don't take lightly mental, physical, and emotional health issues. Not trying to knock him for that, but we just didn't get any clear answers on that. You know what I'm saying? Huff said, I'm not a doctor, so I don't know. I learned a long time ago that head coaches don't cross medical lines. So teams have got to figure out, Stephen, this is why he was probably brought in on top 30. What happened there? Was it something, a family thing that they didn't want to discuss? Was it something with you? Was it an injury that you wanted to get cleaned up? You didn't want it to be public? They're going to dig into that, and that's what they've got to do. Also, in 2023, he battled through some ankle injuries, and then he was invited to the Shrine Bow. He ends up hurting himself at the Shrine Bow. He just had to have surgery on a – he uh, ruptured his bicep tendon at a practice in the Senior Bow. My bad, I said Shrine Bow. But in the Senior Bow, he ruptured a bicep tendon. Uh, he had to have surgery – Missed four to six months is what he's going to miss. And he he didn't get to do the combine or a pro day. So he's nice. still a mystery here. Yep, nice. Just a big old injury history list, huh? Yeah. Uh, always good to see on the guys that you're looking at. Uh, real quick, before I head out today, I want to sh shout out Pacey with a two bomb. What's up, Pacey? Good to see you, brother. Also, Ron, been a member for two months now. And he <sighs> gifted out a membership per usual. Let's go. We appreciate you, Ron. You the Off man. for Ron. Uh, but yeah, lots going on with Rasheen Ali. It's um, like you said, it's a very fun watch. If you just watch his tape, he's fun. 
you know, electric at times. Right. And, and he does a lot of different things well, but there are some some negatives. And, and of course, you got to dig into them when you're really looking at a draft pick. Um, Mike, real quick, too, before I head out, just want to throw this at you in case you didn't know. Jadavian Clowney just signed with the Carolina Panthers. Uh, so if you'd like to discuss that and the defensive end thing, because a lot of people have been talking about, can the Chiefs right. you know, do this or that? But uh, the answer is no to that one. Uh, but yeah, I appreciate you guys being here. Hit the like button, uh, subscribe, all that good stuff, and hang out with Mike for a while. Show right. him some love. Throw him some super chats. Make him feel good, okay? Make him feel good. Make Steve, him before feel you good. go, can I give you my comp of Rasheen Ali to get your immediate reaction? Uh, sure, let's hear it. Charkandrick West. That's who he reminds me of. You know what my reaction to that would be? What? Meh. Man. Did you want a big Charkandrick fan? No. Uh, we had we, dinner we, with Charkandrick. Uh, yeah, we did. We ate dinner with Charkandrick West at uh, Q39. Q39. Yeah. Cool guy. Cool guy. Uh, K- Cam Irving was there, too. Cam and Charkandrick. Neither one of them with the Chiefs anymore. Yeah. But I'll say, Steve, times. that's what I've seen, man. I'll let you marinate on that when you head off to work right now. Yeah, I'm going to go marinate on it while I work and hate my life a little bit. Uh, appreciate you guys. Appreciate uh, Car- uh, Carth here. He's been a member for a month, so thanks for the good show, guys. Uh, Yeah, we appreciate you guys always watching, sticking with us, uh, leaving comments, hitting the like button, all that good stuff. But uh, I'm going to head out. You guys have some fun with Mike. Uh, I'll see you guys next time. See you, Steve. I'll talk to you later. Guys, it's just me and you. It's just me and you. It's just all of us. I'm going to go ahead and go to the chat. We'll talk a little bit about the chat because we talked a little bit about Christian Boyd getting that, uh, that top 30 visit. We've talked a little bit about Rasheen Ali running back Marshall getting a little top 30 visit. So let's go through and and talk about some things. Uh, Wolfpack 66 said, is the kid more like a Jamal Charles? I didn't see any similarities to Jamal Charles, in my opinion. I I do have a little bit of some video. It doesn't show much because it was his it was his uh time at practice in the uh, East West game for the senior bow, it doesn't really show a lot, but when you look at him on the field, like he doesn't look like Jamal Charles. He looks, he's like 5'11", 206 or something like that. He's yeah. 5'11", 206. He didn't get any numbers. We do know he's got about 31 inch arms and about eight, five eighth inch hands, somewhere in that range. He's 23. He'll be 24. I don't know if he thir- turns 24 when the season starts or after. I mean, he's, he's good. He's good. Don't get me wrong. I don't want to downplay anything about him. Like, I think he's a good running back. I think he's got really good hands. I think he's sneaky athletic. He can create for himself. That's another thing uh, with running backs. Are they products of offensive lines or can they create on their own? He can definitely create on, create on his own. So I don't think it's a bad thing that they talk to him. I think they're doing their due diligence. And I think they, if you've noticed, like even Christian Boyd, he didn't get to do the combine. He had a little bit of a uh, tweaked hammy, couldn't do any pro day stuff. That pretty much gets you invited in for top 30 visits. You get you get you a little free vacation, a little free steak dinner. You're getting a lot of free stuff just so they can come in and talk to you a little bit. So I think that what happens is once you create this little bit of intrigue and then you don't give them everything they want, then you have to be invited in personally like they're getting it. And I think they're they're checking through his history and everything and they're talking with him. I don't think football's a problem. I think he wants to play football. I think he's good. And uh, I don't think that's an issue or anything like that. It's not going to turn into like a Kadarius Tony, does he love football or don't he love football? It's not going to be that thing. Um, Wolfpack also says four weeks until draft Christmas. Does Veach go gold throughout the draft? It is. We're about 30 days, 29 days from the draft. Dude, I have been working nonstop on this draft. I'm getting up at like 8 a.m. I'm crunching numbers. I'm snagging all kinds of data and plugging it in. And it's, it's eight, nine hours a day. I'm sitting here on Microsoft spreadsheet, Excel, whatever it's called. And I'm just pounding numbers all day, baby. Like I'm trying to figure it out. And it's one thing I'll tell you, it's very tough to try to decipher what I think Brett Veach is going to do, by the way, Brett Veach is a wild card. You don't know what he's going to do. A lot of people are asking, do you think Brett Veach is going to go wide receiver round one? Honestly, it's out of character for Brett Veach and the Chiefs to go wide receiver round one. I I honestly think it's super out of character, and I don't know. It's more logical, if you pay attention to the Chiefs, that we like to target these guys in round two. 
we'll often find a guy in round two that we really like, somebody between 35 and 50 on big boards, and the Chiefs will like them, and then what do they do? They'll trade up if they have to, right? They'll just do that. And uh, I just don't know if the Chiefs are going to uh, actually draft somebody in the first round or if they're going to wait to the second round. And I feel like the guys they brought in, the Anthony Golds, the Javon Bakers, all those guys that they've talked top 30, those guys are mid-round guys. Those aren't guys you look at in the first round. So, yeah, it, it, it's kind of weird. Tyler Durden 4 says Tyrone Tracy looks like a good fit for KC. I talked – uh, with Lance on the Spoken, by the way, shout out Lance and the Spoken. If you guys don't follow them, uh, they do good stuff. Um, a lot of people will know Lance from Twitter. He start he he gets like rages going on Twitter. People, you know, don't like his his commentary. But he drafted him in the seventh round. I told him that Tyrone Tracy will not make it to the seventh round, in my opinion. I think most running backs are going to not get picked till maybe late second, early third. That's when you're your top guys, your J, your Jonathan Brooks, your Trey Benson's, your Jalen Wrights, that's when they're flying off the board. I honestly have Tyrone Tracy right now ranked my number nine why or number nine running back. And he was number 10 yesterday. But when they come out with that new rules change with the kickoff rule, I do think Tyrone Tracy's value goes up a smidge. Why? Because he was a receiver, he's turned running back, and he's got beautiful one cut ability. Okay, so if you guys don't know, he played wide receiver at Iowa. He transferred to Purdue. He played running back. He's in the 94th percentile in his vert, 89th percentile in his three-cone drill. He forced 46 missed tackles on only 114 attempts. Think about that. He's For every 114, he had 46 missed. So for every attempt, he's making a guy miss like once every two carries. He's making a guy just flat out miss. So he's pretty good. Like, he's got good balance. He's got good flexibility. He's a willing blocker in the backfield. He's not the greatest because he is a wide receiver, but he'll put his nose in there and he'll hit linebackers and things. His weaknesses is that he's 24 years old. But guess what? He's not been a running back taking hits since high school. He's been a wide receiver. So has his body got the wear and tear of a 24-year-old running back? No, I don't think so. So I think he's fine. I think at worst, he's a rotational guy. He's got a real shot of being a third down running back. I think he's a pretty good clone of one Jarek McKinnon. I think he's fine. He had a 90.5 PFF rushing grade. 506 yards is what he gained on the ground after first contact. That's insane. He had 14 carries of 15 plus yards, and he had a 163.5 elusiveness rating. We just talked about uh, Rasheen Ali. Tyrone Tracy's got a 163.5 elusiveness rating. Rasheen Ali has a 36.6. Okay, that's 100 points higher elusiveness with Tyrone Tracy. That's why Tyrone Tracy's in the top 10 at number 9 for me. That's why Rasheen Ali is number 14. Uh, Some big differences there in the way they do it. But, yeah, I really like Tyrone Tracy. Tyler, appreciate you throwing that one out there. Um... Let me see. Let's get to some more comments, man. I love talking about this stuff. That is uh, that is just the thing I love, man. Uh, Gary says, Mike, do you see Leggett going higher now with the kickoff rule? Xavier Leggett, for me, was starting to borderline that top first round, top 32, 35 range. He was starting to get in there. At first, he was right around 40. He's progressively gotten better for me. I go back and I compare some of his his pro day stuff. I compare some of just everything he's done. Watch it with the film. And although he doesn't have two years of good production, there's reasons behind that. So I really like him. I, I've got him up there. And like you're saying, with this new kickoff rule, yes, it is a possibility. That is a big guy. I think uh, he goes up some. I think a lot of running backs. I think Ray Davis from Kentucky starts getting more valuable. I think Blake Corum out of Michigan gets more valuable. Uh, I think Malachi Corley gets a little more valuable. Somebody like that who's big bodied and can one cut and go. I think this new kickoff rule, it, like I was at first, I wasn't sure about the kickoff rule. I was like, ah, man, I wish they'd quit messing with football. Like, I wish they would quit. I'm, I'm not the hip drop stuff. I get it. It causes injuries, but that's football. Football's just injuries. Like, we've all done this. If, like, they showed the Justin Reed play against Tyler Boyd. And as what not to do. And I posted that on X and I'm like, well, what's he supposed to do? Like if you're trailing a guy, how do you tackle someone? If you don't get 
them wrapped up and get on the ground. Like you can't run with them. You can't run through them while they're running in front of you. I just don't know what teams are supposed to do. I think for me, I don't like it because it's more officials having uh, rules in which they interpret themselves. It's just a broad rule. Like, yes, they have to follow strict guidelines of what constitutes the rule and the penalty, but it's still a decision that they make in the moment, just like the uh, roughing the passer, just like all that stuff. I want to take that stuff out of the officials. Stop giving the officials so much power to sway games and get it out of that. And this just adds more to it. So guess what? By the end of the season, you're going to have tons of people crying about the Chiefs. Oh, they got away with a hip drop. Oh, this and this and this. Or they didn't call it on them. And you're just going to get more and more. It's just going to add on to more of the crybabiness. So that's all we're going to get. Um, Wolfpack says, did the Chiefs go off at the tackle or wide receiver for the first pick in the draft? Honestly, I don't think that's the only two. I honestly think uh, Darius Robinson, defensive end out of Missouri, is still in play. Uh, I think any good pass rushing defensive end falls down the board. The Chiefs could do it. Our pass rush is kind of weak. Uh, again, Felix on one side, George on the other. Felix didn't have the greatest rookie season. Behind him, you got B.J. Thompson, another raw rookie that doesn't really set the edge. And then you got O'Menohue, who's now injured and is going to miss games all the way up until November, December. They've got to do something there. They've yet to sign back back Mike Dana. You will have Malik Herring. He's going to be back. But, I mean, Malik Herring wasn't nothing to write home about either. Like the guy, but it's not like he. I put him on the line and I'm like, well, we're set. No, we're not. we got to have some more pass rush. We really do. Um, Brian says, do McConkey and Leggett have any realistic chance of making it to 64? I honestly ain't interested in projects or Tyreek wannabes anymore. Fixed tackle and wide receiver, maybe add a pass rush and a running back. I agree with all this. McConkie and Leggett, neither one have a chance to get to 64, in my opinion. I think um, McConkie, people are kind of like falling off the McConkie bandwagon a little bit. There was talks that he was, you know, if he ran under 4-4, and he did, he ran a 4-3-9. If he could get in the 4-3s, he was a lock at first round. You're now seeing mock draft after mock draft after mock draft. Expert, expert, expert. They're saying that Lad McConkey is good. He's a good route runner, but maybe he's not going to go in the first round. We can't find a fit for him. We can't do this. I don't think McConkey gets gets past pick 10 in the second round, and I don't think Leggett does either. I think that they go no further than 42. If they got to 50, I'd be shocked. I would be flat out jaw on the ground like um some kind of cartoon i'm just like what and it would just be like what yeah i i don't i don't see it happening do they fall to say 47 48 maybe even 50 maybe the chiefs now get the play to come up and grab one that's possible i just don't know i don't know it's tough because free agency fills needs free agency creates needs and You've also got those things of like, okay, so you sign somebody in free agency, us with Hollywood Brown, but past one year, does it really help? Are we good enough to are, – are Hollywood Brown for one year is going to be like, nope, not going to take a wide receiver now early. So I don't know. Personally, I don't think they'll take a wide receiver in round one. I really don't. If they do, I would be a little surprised because they just don't show that that's what they do. Would it like just floor me? No, it wouldn't floor me if they took a wide receiver in the first round. I just personally don't think that that's what they'll do. But if you said at thirty two, you're not even getting a you're not even getting a day one ready left tackle. You're not getting that until you get in the top fifteen to twenty. And still, then is Troy Fatano great? Love him. Got the best footwork in the draft. I think he could play every position up and down the line. He's got long enough arms he can play left tackle. I'm seeing that he can maybe drop all the way into the 20s with maybe the Seahawks. If he dropped that far and the Chiefs didn't come get him, I would be irate. Like, that's a player that you move up for. Talise Fuanga from Oregon State, that's a player you move up for. I'm hearing there's a huge buzz about Amarius Mims. Personally, I don't think Amarius Mims has enough film on tape. I get it that he's a massive dude and a good athlete, but to me, he still feels like a project, and it's like, I don't know. But I'm hearing that he could possibly go top 15 right now. Like, there's some big buzz on him. So, with a quarterback run, look, if J.J. McCarthy, is he worth a top 15 pick? In my opinion, no. He's number like 18 on my big board. 
Could I justify them taking them at like 11 if the Vikings pick at 11? Yeah. Could you justify the Vikings taking 11 and their newly acquired pick and coming up into the top three, four, five to get J.J. McCarthy? To me, it's crazy. Is it wrong? I don't think it's wrong. I think J.J. McCarthy would be fine if he can sit a year. He might be fine right off the rip with all the – if he goes to somebody like the Vikings with all those weapons. He was asked to just be a game manager at Michigan, and he done it very well. He's got all the intangibles. But you're going to have a big run on guys like that. You're going to have a big run early on uh, some wide receivers. You're going to have a huge run on those. So I think it pushes back some of these good offensive linemen. Maybe your Oli uh, your Oli Fashanos, your uh, you know Fuanga. Maybe I don't say Mills, but maybe Tyler Guyton. Now some of these guys may fall back a little further than the Chiefs thought, and now those could be possibilities. Kind of like we all thought last year that they maybe were trying to trade it for Anton Harrison or somebody like that. So it is a possibility. When you start getting big runs on, I hope all the, look. I hope Michael Penix. I hope Bo Nix. Hell, I hope Spencer Radler gets picked in the top 10, okay? The more guys like that that gets picked in the top 10, the talent falls. And if the talent falls, then we're just sitting on it, and it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Uh, Jared with a two-bomb says, kickoff rule, please explain. So what they're going to do is they're going to put Butker back where he usually kicks the ball off from, right? From what I'm thinking is that the – let me – actually, look, I'll show you if I can find it really quick, there's a video going around. I think the video will actually show you um, better than what I could explain it. I really do. Adam Schefter put out a video yesterday, and uh, I think it very much helps what I'm trying to show. So here we go. I'll throw this on the screen. I'll just share the screen with you because... It's just, you know, it's one of those things. I'm probably going to get flagged for this from YouTube. You know how it is. But thanks for the two bomb. Get ready to throw it up for you. Yeah, you'll probably get flagged in this, and they're going to demonetize me for showing this. But here we go. This is what it is. So we can see it. I'll go ahead and make it full screen for you. There you go. So they're lined up. It's an XFL kind of thing. So you can see they're lined up here. He's going to kick off from the 30, and these guys are on this side of the field. So all these players, they are not allowed to move until the guy catches the ball. So when he catches the ball, as soon as he catches, boom, he catches it. They're allowed to go. Once they go, it's just, you know, it's football from that point. But what they're trying to eliminate, they're trying to eliminate the run all the run, and then, of course, they start here and they run backwards. It's going to eliminate the surprise onside kicks. Uh, it's theoretically going to eliminate all the buildup and the concussion and the head injuries, which, by the way, there's not been tons of reported stuff like that on kickoff, so I don't know why they just keep messing with it. But to be honest, look, there was tons of just touchbacks last year, and there wasn't a lot of – returns. I think at least this, because if it goes in the end zone, I think that I don't remember where it comes out to, but it don't come out as far anymore. So it actually is a better thing to kick to the person than to kick it in the end zone. So I do believe you're going to get more, um, you're going to get more returns, which could make it more exciting. And it, it, it makes the running back position now a little more valuable. Maybe some of these guys that would go late in drafts like Anthony gold. Now he may become, an earlier consideration because he's got the speed. Um, But yeah, it could alter the way that teams now draft. It could alter the way that teams actually model their team. Maybe their 53 rosters now look a little different. Maybe you start carrying more linebackers. Maybe you're carrying more tight ends, somebody that can play some special teams. So yeah, it's pretty crazy, but appreciate it, Jared. Uh, Let me see. Let's get to more. More, more comments. Yep, KWL says if you kick in the end zone, it comes out to the 40. So see, you don't want it to come out to the 40. You really don't. That's just too far, man. You realize with like Butker, if Patrick Mahomes gets the ball in the 40, we've only got to go like 25, 30 yards and Butker's going to have a crack at a 50-yard field goal. That's insane. Like, it's just insane. Um... 
Chris said he thinks it goes to the 35. Not for sure which one it is, to be honest. Does it really matter, though? 35, 40, it's almost the same stuff. Um, let me check. Under the new rule, yeah, well, huh. Let me see. USA Today. Kickers will kick off from their own 35. Ten players will line up on the opposing team's 40. The receiving team will have nine players lined up five yards away from the 35. The two returners will be – so you can have two returners. Two returners will be stationed in a landing zone from the 20-yard line to the end zone. No player except the kicker and returner can move until the ball is received. Okay. Fewer touchbacks, more returns. Here are the facts. The NFL reported that at least 1,970 touchbacks occurred on 26, almost 2,700 kickoff plays in the 2023 season. That was a rate of 22%. The hope is that the new rule will result in more returns. Any kick inbounds can be returned. There are also opportunities for touchbacks at the 30. If any kick reaches the end zone in the air, if any kick goes out of bounds, if any kick passes the back of the end zone, it comes out to the 30. They're saying it's just the 30. So it's not the 35, it's not the 40, it's the 30. Huh. The 30 is not that bad, though. You think guys will just kick the ball in the end zone? I mean, what's the difference? It used to come out to the 20. Now it comes out to the 30, and I don't know what it was last year. Might have just been the 30 last year, too. I don't remember. Dude, they keep messing with these rules so much. It's like, my God, can we just keep something? And then this rule, by the way, it's only in effect for one season. It's in effect for one season, and then they're going to vote on it to keep if it, see if it sustains. It's just insane, man. I don't even know. I wish they would just quit. I wish they quit messing with it, to be honest. Will it make the game better? Maybe. I mean, maybe. You might get more exciting kickoff plays rather than taking a knee or this or that, but I just don't know, man. Uh, Sean says, wide receivers too deep for 32. If a top five tackle doesn't drop within 20s, look at defensive tackle. If defensive tackle edge isn't there, go get a Mitchell maybe. FAU shouldn't have been at 32 last year. It's a lot to unpack. A f top five tackle doesn't drop into the 20s. I don't think a top five tackle will drop into the 20s. I honestly don't. It depends on what uh, the Jets do. The Jets have looked at tackle. They've traded for Morgan Moses. They've signed, you know, Tyron Smith now. But is that enough? Like, it might be. They may take Brock Bowers at 10. You may just be like, screw it, we're taking Brock Bowers. They could take Ole Fashanu. They could take, I don't know. I think J.C. Latham is a very good right tackle that could probably play up and down. I think he says he could play left. He's the most ready right now, in my opinion, besides maybe Joe Alton. It's looking like he may fall. I do think the Saints are going to take one now. There's been some, you know, News coming out about the Saints, so I don't know, man. I don't know where they go with it. I don't know how many fall. But yeah, DT Edge, I think that's something that's always on the board. I think DT Edge is on the board. Why? We just got to be... A lot of people are uh, mocking corners in the first round. And I get that we lost Sneed, but the Chiefs don't routinely take corners early. They did trade up for McDuffie, but McDuffie was like a literally a, to me, McDuffie was the second highest rated corner in that class and he had fell that low. So that makes sense. I don't see us doing one. I think Bucky Brooks has taken Kamari Lasseter out of Georgia in his mock draft yesterday or the day before. I like Kamari Lasseter, but he ran like a four, six, two. I don't know. Like I wouldn't be like super opposed to it. Like if the Chiefs took it, I wouldn't like just rage, but. I just don't think it's that big of a need. I honestly think defensive line, offensive tackle, receiver, I don't think receiver's even our number one need. Uh, for long term, maybe. But I think this is such a deep receiver class that if you can't snag a... If you couldn't snag, I don't think... 
you're not getting the top four. I think Brian Thomas Jr. could end up falling a little bit further than we think just because of the way the board's going to play out with quarterbacks and stuff. I don't know. I'm seeing stuff now where they're talking about A.D. Look, I thought A.D. Mitchell done everything he could at the combine to get himself as a lock first round. Kind of thought Xavier Worthy did too with that four two one, But all the latest mocks and stuff, everything had both of them falling out of the first round. So I don't know, man. It's getting wild. I think a lot of these guys are just getting bored now. Now that the pro days are kind of over with and everything's kind of died down, now that everybody's just chasing headlines. I mean, I literally seen guys yesterday saying that J.J. McCarthy was the pick at number two with the Commanders. It wasn't going to be Jaden Daniels or Drake May. Would it surprise me? Probably not, but are they serious? I don't know. Ray Ray says, hey, Mike, are you still high on Isaac Garendo as backup to pop? Yeah, I think Isaac Garendo is one of the guys that now benefit from this rule. He benefits from this new kickoff rule. Um, Isaac Garendo is right outside of my top 10. He's my number 11 running back. He doesn't have a ton of film at UofL to watch. He he started at Wisconsin. He comes to UofL. Uh, like, his film's not, like, bad, but it's not great either. There was... There were misses here and there with his film or whatever. To me, he kind of reminds me a little bit of like Matt Forte, if you remember him back with the Chicago Bears. He's about the same size, six foot two twenty one. But yeah, he ran a four three with a one five five ten yard split with a forty one and a half inch vertical. He's an athletic machine, and at six foot two twenty one, that can get up to four three three. One cut and go on one of those kickoffs could be nasty. So yeah. I think maybe Isaac Grindo now could possibly be more valuable than even maybe like a Will Shipley out of Clemson. Will Shipley's 5'11", 206. And I don't even think he plays at 206. I think he plays at like 190-something. That's too tiny, man. Will Shipley's going to have a little bit of problem in the NFL. I know people like some of his shiftiness and this and that and everything. He's my running back 10 right now. And I honestly just don't know if he can hold up. He's going to have some kind of an Austin, Austin Eckler type row probably. Heck of an athlete. I mean, he's good, but if you watch his film, he just goes down so easily. So, Will Shipley's one of those guys that's fell down my draft boards. I don't care what he runs. It doesn't matter. If you get hit one time, if the wind blows too hard and the guy falls down, who wants him? Like, it's not that big of a deal. So, yeah, I believe guys like Isaac Garendo are going to come up a little higher than you would think. Isaac Garendo may get into the top 10. But then again, we've also got to remember – this rule feels like, you know, extreme right now. That's what everybody's talking about. But when it's all said and done, is it really going to move the needle that much? I don't know if it will. I mean, think about it. You've got guys on, we've got 20 guys on our roster that could return kicks now. Kadarius Tony becomes super dangerous here. Scott Moore actually becomes a little dangerous here. I know Scott Moore couldn't catch the ball too well from from uh, punts, but punts and kickoffs are a little different. And if nobody's coming at him, right, nobody's even allowed to move till he catches the ball. So now I don't think catching the ball becomes a problem there because you're not worried about people flying around and getting your vision and different things. But yeah, like anybody with four, four speed or better with a little bit of shiftiness. I mean, Daneric Prince can now return kicks. I mean, you're. I, th I, I just think maybe maybe we're overthinking the kickoff roll a little much. Maybe we are. Because now maybe just your, your running back three, your running back four has a good chance of being able to play some. But maybe you don't draft specifically for it. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, it just depends. I'm sure uh, Dave Tobe's going to have some beautiful stuff drawn up. I'm sure that's what he does. Uh, let's get to some more questions here, baby. I gotta find them though, man. When I can't, uh, when I can't scroll and keep up with myself when Steve's gone, it's hard to it's hard to keep up. Uh, Plaque plug says, "I wish we could get Kool Aid McKinstry, dude. I'm becoming big on Kool Aid. I had Kool Aid about 40th on my big board, and then once he proved with that foot injury that he could run in the four fours, I mean, dag on." Like, if you watch some of his film, he can flat out cover. I want to say in his games against LSU, he only allowed, like, 50 yards of offense. I don't even know if he allowed that. Like, he can, I don't know. There's something about him. I think he's he's going to be fine at 5'11 and a half, 199. To me, he he's very uh, well taught. He's disciplined. 
he could be a Sneed type guy. I do believe now that he he might go in the first round. He may go in the first round. Uh, he definitely won't get to us in the second round. So if he falls to us in the first, they'd have to take him in the first. So I just don't know. I really don't know if they'll. Uh, I really just don't know if they'll take a corner in the first round. Sean says Patrick Paul. Any thoughts? Look, we were uh, we talked about Patrick Paul here pretty early in the process, maybe even before the Chiefs even started talking with him. Chiefs met up with him at the combine. He's six seven and a half, three thirty one. Uh, he's played all of his snaps, so I want to say that he's played thousand snaps at left tackle. So he's he's a true left tackle. Uh, he had a five one three forty, a one seven seven ten yard split, twenty nine inch vert. But his arms, thirty six and a fourth inch arms, are long, man. That is super long. He's getting his arms on pass rushers quick. He is my uh, he's all chiefed up's number eleven tackle. But tackles go left tackle and right tackle. I think Patrick Paul is a legit left tackle. If you just look at left tackle, I think Joe Walt's a left tackle. Troy Fatanu could be a left tackle. I'll say J.C. Latham. I'll probably put him in a right tackle for now. Talise Fuonga could play left tackle, in my opinion. Ole could play it. So that's four. Guyton could play it. Mims could play it. That's six. Yeah, he's probably about my eighth or ninth left tackle in the draft. Again, that's if you think Tyler Gotten can play left tackle, which I think he can. I think a Mims could do it. Uh, we actually have uh, Kingsley Sua Maltia. Sua Maltaia. Sua Maltaia. I'll get it right in a second. Sua Maltaia from BYU. I actually got him rated a little higher than Jordan Morgan. Not a huge fan of Jordan Morgan. If you've been watching this show... I look Jordan Morgan come off of an ACL surgery in 2022. He come back last year and played okay, but there were times that I just watched Jordan Morgan just get bullied. He showed up six five three eleven. That's little man three eleven. Amarius Mims is three forty. Patrick Paul's three thirty one, and you all trusting a guy that's three hundred and eleven pounds to to block Patrick Mahomes' backside, his old blind side. I don't think so. I'm I'm not a big Jordan Morgan guy. I could be wrong, but I just, I don't like him. Uh, Brian says, I like Paul, but he could fall to 64 easier than Leggett. 100%. He could fall a lot further than Leggett could. Um, Gary says, Mike, how many QBs will go in the top 25? That's a great question, Gary. I'm actually, if you guys listen to podcast, if you even care about the draft, I love it. And so... I'll analyze everybody. Look, I know the Chiefs have Patrick Mahomes. I, I tweeted this the other day. The Chiefs have Patrick Mahomes. It seems really weird that a Chiefs channel would have to dive in on quarterbacks in a draft, but I do it. So I have now finished all my rankings. I finished all my write-ups for my top 10 quarterbacks. I'm getting ready to release on probably Spotify, probably on our Patreon, patreon.com slash all chiefed up. Maybe a quick video on YouTube as well. I'm not for sure how that works. See what Steve wants to do with it. But I'm going to try to do a top 10 of all Chiefs Up's top 10 of every position. So again, quarterback's not something that people worry about here now that Patrick Mahomes is here. But I did come out with my quarterbacks, and I just finished them up. Who do I think goes in the first round? I think Caleb Williams goes number one. I honestly think Jaden Daniels, either Jaden Daniels or Drake May is going to go, you know, However, two and three, more than likely. J.J. McCarthy, honestly, is picking up a lot of steam. And if he went number three, could anybody really see the Patriots sitting at number three and not considering J.J. McCarthy? Oh, the Patriots, who made their entire dynasty from the 2000s off of a Michigan quarterback, a Michigan quarterback that wasn't super athletic. And now you get a Michigan quarterback that's really athletic. Like, I feel like they could take a flyer on... J.J. McCarthy, because he's picking up a lot of steam. So does J.J. McCarthy go three now? Does he go two? Do they fall back from J.J.? Who knows? But I think they'll all get in the first round. So I think you're looking at Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels, Drake May, J.J. McCarthy. Honestly, I have Bo Nix rated at number five over Penix. So I think he, I like Bo Nix a little better. Now, Bo Nix is decently older. He played five or six years in college. He's 24. But Penix is 23, so it's not that big of a difference. So, yeah, um, 
Bo Nix could go in the first round. Depends. If they all are off the board, say May and McCarthy. Say the Vikings get up and get McCarthy. If the Broncos have to, they'll take Bo Nix probably. I mean, why wouldn't they? They don't have a second round pick. So, yeah, you can feasibly see that. And then maybe somebody trades in at the end of the first and gets Michael Penix. Who knows? Maybe Penix just goes to uh, the Vikings or who who knows at this point. Good Lord, he could go to the to the Raiders. I don't know. But I think at least, uh, I'll say four. I'd put the over-under at five. Uh, that's where I'd put the over-under at, and I would say under. I think what's all said and done, it'll stop at McCarthy. Maybe Knicks. Maybe Knicks. So I'll say five. I'll say five for now. Good question, man. Let me catch up. Sean, what's up, Sean? I saw a mock where the Chiefs traded up to 19 for 32 and 64 to get worthy. If that happens, Beach should be fired. We actually just reviewed that mock draft. That was by Chad Reuter, NFL.com. We just went through that draft. It's going to come out on our Patreon here in like a day or two. Maybe Steve already put it up, but it's going to be on our Patreon this week. Dude, we went through that draft. That is one of the worst drafts I've ever seen in my life. If we traded up to 19 and give up our first and second round pick for Xavier Worthy, I would be irritated beyond belief. I'd be so pissed off that I don't even know what I would do. I would be irate. Xavier Worthy is not the 19th best player in this draft. He's not worth that. It's, he's just not. I'm sorry. And you definitely don't give up 64 to come do it. That is a stupid, lazy pick that everybody's now put on the Chiefs. Just because he runs fast, he's got to be a Chief. And the people that are buying into it kind of annoy me too because it's like, you guys just allow the stereotype. Like, come on. Like, I would much rather sit at 32 and maybe get a Xavier Leggett if he falls. I would take a shot on a Keon Coleman before I'd want Xavier Worthy. Hell, I'd rather have Ricky Persall than Xavier Worthy, to be honest. He runs better routes, okay? So, I think Lad McConkey runs better routes. He's probably more... I mean, all Xavier Worthy, to me, he's got decent hands and he can track a deep ball. But, I mean, come on. In the NFL, if they put your hands on him, they're going to beat the crap out of him. He may succeed the way the Dolphins run their offenses, where they just move everybody behind the line and get running starts behind the line. But the Chiefs don't tend to do that all that much. Like, we didn't replicate that too much throughout the year. Maybe that's a new wrinkle they'll throw in, but I just don't see giving up a second-round pick just to come get worthy. It doesn't make any sense to me. Hated that. And then I want to say in round three, we got somebody else that just kind of stunk. So, look, this guy's crazy. He had A.D. Mitchell going, like, number 49 to the Bengals in the second round. If A.D. Mitchell goes all the way almost out of the top 50 – Dude, get out of here. Oh, Blake Fisher. Blake Fisher was who he had us drafted in round three. Tackle from Notre Dame, I believe. Dude, if you come out of that draft with Xavier Worthy and Blake Fisher, that's all you get in three rounds, I will be irate. That's not what we want. That is definitely, we're not trying to give up picks here. Like, let's gain picks. Dude, I don't, Chad, that dude should be fired, man. Dude should just be flat out fired. What an idiotic mock draft that was. Sean says Paul is one of the few pure left tackles. Yeah, he is. He is. He's good. I think he's fine. I think Patrick Paul could actually sneak himself into the first round. He really could. Um, there's starting to be some heat on Kingsley. Sumataia. Sumataia. I love saying that name. Sumataia. Panay Sewell's cousin, man. He's got the same exact numbers. He's a pure left tackle. He can play right, too, but he's a pure left tackle. That kid can play. Uh, me and Steve were on him. We've been on him now. Seen yesterday, people are starting to, like, people are starting to recognize. They're starting to put him in mock drafts. I seen where PFF did a mock draft where a guy took him 30? 31, maybe, to the to the 49ers, possibly? He's starting to make some noise. He's starting to get a little first-round buzz. Didn't see that coming. Actually did see it coming. 
everybody will forget or not even pay attention that we said it and then just talk about it as if they made it up on their own. Uh, Sean said, if you think you could get Kingsley in the second. Yeah, I don't think Kingsley will fall to 64. Now, look, if he fell, maybe you could do it differently. Like, So maybe instead of trading up for a wide receiver in the second round, maybe they could trade up for the tackle in the second. That may be a, a thing. Like, what if at 32 you could snag a key on Coleman and then maybe at pick 50, maybe Kingsley falls to, say, 50 or 49, and, and whoever's picking 49 has got some good tackles, so you're just not worried about it. So maybe you try to pack something up and come in the top 50, maybe 50, to get Kingsley or somebody. That would be something. Or maybe Patrick Paul. Maybe that's a cool idea. Maybe we'll mess with that in one of our mock drafts or something just to, like, show how it would look, but... Yeah, that's a good idea. Ray Ray says, according to Arlovsky, J.J. McCarthy's a better QB than Caleb. A lot of people are starting to say that McCarthy is, look, McCarthy is good. That That's what people want. People want a guy that's selfless. So what did McCarthy do? He was a high recruit. He had actually recruit. he was actually committed to, where was he committed to? Let me think. So he played at IMG Academy, which is Brandon, Bradenton, Florida, my bad. Bradenton, Florida, IMG Academy. Who was it? Oh, Ohio State. Okay, so yeah, at age 16, he was supposed to go to Ohio State, and uh, Ryan Day told him that he wouldn't recruit another quarterback, and he did. He recruited another quarterback, and he basically just at 16 years old called him a liar. He goes to their rival, which is Michigan, plays for Harbaugh knowing that Harbaugh is going to run a, a running offense and he doesn't get to be the star. He put his head down and just made it work, man. Like, that's what he does. So he's very selfless. He'll do what he's got to do. Uh, he's very green at the position, but that's what they want. They want a guy that they can mold. He's very moldable. In 2022, he passed it for 65%, 2,700 yards, 22 touchdowns, only five picks, a 155 QB rating. And then in 2023, he upped it 72%, almost 3,000 yards, 22 touchdowns, and only four picks. So he actually threw the same amount of touchdowns, threw for 300 yards more, completed 7% more passes, and his interception went lower. So he's progressing at a rate, and he's very athletic. I do see J.J. McCarthy maybe in five years when this is all said and done. He could be the best quarterback out of all of them. He really could. He's got that intangible. And Caleb Williams has got that dangerous – vibe about him. I don't know if it's a USC thing either because Marshawn Lloyd, the running back coming out, he kind of had the same thing. Like, they just never give up on a play. It's like every play, they won't just take the four or five yard sure first down or whatever. Like, they have to take, they have to go for the 40 yard home run every time. So they got to both learn to play within a system. And in the NFL, it's more valuable to be picking up three or four yard first downs than it is to always be taking 40 and 50 yard shots that are just very Tough to complete the NFL, in my opinion. So, yeah. Uh, it's possible. J.J. McCarthy started about number 35 on my big board, and now he is all the way. He's worked himself right now in my latest draft. Not draft, but my latest big board. He's worked himself now to number 18. So he's went up almost 20 spots on my big board. And honestly, he may go up even higher. He's good. He's really good. Becky, what's up, Becky? Says, I don't see the Chiefs taking a wide receiver in round one. Yeah, I don't know. It, it depends. It just really depends. Is, is wide receiver really our biggest worry? Is it our biggest need? I don't know. I guess that's debatable, to be honest. I think short term, it's probably not. If you look at it as if Hollywood's probably going to be gone after this year, you're going to have Scott Moore ending the end of his rookie deal. You're going to have Kadarius Tony ending the end of his rookie deal. Presumably neither one of them will be back. Justin Watson's second year in a two-year deal is coming up this year. So next year you're looking at no wide receivers on the roster basically. Maybe he does have to do something here. you got to be pretty drastic. Would it be crazy? I don't think you're getting rid of Sky Moore because he's got three years. No. He would have two more years. So I don't think they'd get rid of him. 
I don't think you get rid of Kadarius Tony because it really makes no sense. It's two and a half million dollars either way. But after next year, I don't think you re-sign him, obviously. So he would be gone. Presumably Justin Watson would be gone. Rasheed Rice would still have two years on his contract after next year. At some point, you have to start drafting. Like, you have to start doing like you did the corner room. But how do you do it? Because, again, I don't think Andy takes seven wide receivers again. I really don't. I feel like five is what he usually would take. Six even felt big, and then he took a seventh. Even without taking a fullback, I don't know, because last year he usually takes four tight ends. Last year he only took three, and that's how we got the seventh wide, maybe. I don't know how he'll do it. It's very weird. It's just going to be a wild one. But, yeah, I think at some point you do have to put a little bit of draft stock into the receiver room. I think the Chiefs have started – they went on that thing of, like, they would go to free agency for offense and they go to the draft for defense. That's been their, like, motto and the way they've done things. I wonder if at some point you switch that. Like, does that work in cycles? Like, has Brent Veach figured it out where, like, if you do three cycles of defensive drafts, and then you sign a lot of offensive players to fill big roles. Then after a three-year cycle or a two-year cycle, you could go back the opposite way. And you grab, now you grab offense for a few years and let the defense go. I don't know. Or is it just a philosophy to where def, you know, defense and the draft are easier to develop than offensive players? I don't know. I would love to sit down with Veach and talk. I like Sometimes I feel like Veach's mind and the way he thinks about football is kind of fascinating. Pretty crazy. I don't know. Yeah, you're right, man. <laughs> Where'd that go? Somebody in the comments. Oh, here it is, Sean. I would like to have Sumataya. I miss saying Sally Amua. Dude, you can't go wrong with these guys. You just can't. These are big guys, and they'll just beat the crap out of you, man. I love their attitudes. I love their work ethics. Man, I just love it. I wish we would take him. It's just a guy. We took him in our first block. I was like, dag on, man. Like, he sat right outside of my top 32. I think he was like my number 37 player overall, maybe 38. And I was like, look, but if you wait any longer, you are going to end up, you know, with a guy that you don't, you probably doesn't even do any better than Wanye right now. So, crazy, man. I decided to take him. I like his name. Sua Mataia. Sua Mataia. I think it's Ia is how he pronounces it. Sua Mataia. He would be very impressed if you heard me pronounce it because I don't think anybody in the world would get that name right. But I know for a fact it's Sua Mataia. He would be very impressed with my skills on how to pronounce his name. We'll take a few more here, and then I got to jump off. I've actually got to go to work too, man. Uh, we're trying to get this hammered out to where we can do this full time, man. I love sitting here doing it. I do it every day from 8 a.m. to probably about 5. And then I work my actual job from about 6 to about midnight. So it is a long process, man. It really is. I'd love to be able to do this full time. But, uh, yeah, just working hard on this. But, yeah, anyway, I'm about to drop my – Top 10 QBs, top 10 running backs on probably Spotify, wherever you listen to podcasts. It'll probably be that. I'll probably do it like a podcast. May do something like with a YouTube video. Maybe. May throw something up on Patreon too. Something like that. But I plan on going through every single position and giving our top 10s. I want people to do that. And then also on Patreon, I'm going to release our top 100 at some point or at least our top 50 players. That way you guys can have that. You can watch the draft with it. And then we plan on doing like all draft content. Uh, we're probably even going to be live for most of the draft. I don't know if we'll be live on night one. Last year we took night one off and just talked after the draft about Felix after we took him. And then we just, we lived everything else. This year we may live at all. I don't know. We'll, we'll have to figure it out how our work schedules work out and everything. But love doing draft stuff, man. I, I love it. So if you guys like draft stuff, this is it, man. Uh, Ray Ray says Clowney signing with the pa- Panthers. Yeah. To me, I don't, I don't think Clowney was ever a consideration for Veach. I don't. I really don't. We shall have to see. Yeah, 
Yeah, man. Okay. Well, I appreciate you guys being here. That's going to wrap it up for today. Um, yeah, man, we'll be back. We may even come back Thursday, which is tomorrow. We may do something there, maybe Friday. I know we'll be back Saturday for a live. So, yeah, man, if we get any more news, we'll come back on. If there's anything breaking, we'll be back on. Uh, but we appreciate you guys being here with us today. Appreciate everybody that donated. Uh, Gil, Pacey, Ron, Karth, Jared. Appreciate all you guys. Uh, if you guys haven't already, smash that like button on the way out. Hit that sub button. Help us go, baby. Help us fly. Help us spread our wings. But I appreciate you guys. Um, yeah, man, that's probably going to do it for the day. Uh, just really appreciate everybody sticking with me. Christian Boyd, Rasheed Ali coming in on top 30s. That's pretty good news, man. People's talking about we needed you know, more defensive line depth. We needed some running back behind Pacheco. So we'll see. I don't know. We also looked at Anthony Gold, Marshawn Nealon. So we've looked at a few defensive players here. We've looked at a few wide receivers. We looked at a few now our first running back here that we know about, Rashid Ali. So we'll have to see, but I appreciate you guys being here. Hit that like button for me on the way out, and you guys have a good one. Go Chiefs. I, 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 I,